What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. There's no doubt that gaming has changed a lot, especially over my lifetime. When I started gaming, you simply bought a cartridge or a disc and that was the game. You didn't get any extras, there was no DLC, heck, we weren't even connected to the internet if we wanted to have game updates. The game was what you got on that disc. Fast forward to today and it is a much different playing field. And what that's opened up, the ability to get updates, the ability to be connected to the internet, is a whole different marketplace for games. We now have battle passes, we have DLCs, we have everything you could think of buying for the game available for different games. Now, this has allowed game companies to continue development on games that would have died off very long ago. However, this has also opened us up to some very predatory practices. Always having a new something to buy makes it so that we want to engage and get that new special item or that new special outfit or that different skin for whatever it is. And if you're not careful, you can end up getting milked for your money until you're broke. The fact of the matter is that we are in a position where you used to spend a certain amount on a game, you played that game until you felt like you got your money's worth out of it. Now we're in a position where you can play a game and literally sink hundreds of dollars into that game and maybe not even notice. You see, the way this is set up is that they piecemeal this stuff in, so it's not all available right at the beginning, and some of it that is available at the beginning won't always be available. So it does make people want to jump on board and buy those items before they go away. Additionally, you may have purchased those items and then something new and cool comes to that game and you decide that you absolutely have to have it. Now, I wanted to do a little bit of research on what some of the games that I'm currently playing have for a store or a battle pass, how much would I sink into each one of these games if I purchased everything that they had available? And I'm gonna cover that a little bit later on in this video. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that you shouldn't buy things from the store or you should buy things from the store. It's completely up to each one of you as an individual to decide if that's something that you wanna do. If it's something you absolutely love and you can't live without, then go ahead and buy it but understand how much money you may be sinking into a single game. I do feel like the next year or two are gonna be very interesting, not only in the gaming industry, but all industries across the board. We have very high inflation and prices just seem to continue to go up. At some point, that is going to hit your pocketbook enough to say that the DLC pack from the game that I love isn't something that's obtainable. I need to buy eggs or milk or something else and it's going to take that money away from being able to purchase these items. So I kind of feel like there's a bubble that may burst very soon in the gaming industry and crush some of these practices altogether. You might be thinking to yourself, well, what can I do about this? I could vote with my wallet and not buy these items? Well, that doesn't really work. It only works if it's on a grand scale because somebody else out there is voting with their wallet by purchasing it. And there isn't a company on the planet that can measure missed sales. If someone decides not to buy something, they can't measure that. There's no way to measure it. What they can measure is how much money and how many purchases are actually coming in. And if those are substantial enough, then companies are just going to continue to do this. The real time to stop this kind of practice was when it first started. If all of us had banded together and simply said, you know what, we're not going to buy a DLC, you should have just included it with the game in the first place, then that would have worked. We wouldn't be in the situation that we're in now. So while I say voting with your wallet doesn't work, it's still something that you should be attentive of. The only way that voting with your wallet actually works is if it's on a grand scale. If they can look at the sales and say, wow, we didn't sell enough to even produce it, then 
that's what's going to change the practice. Without sending that kind of message to the gaming company, they're just going to continue doing what they're doing. Call of Duty has a new version out, and we're going to start with that game. If you were to buy Modern Warfare 2, it is $69.99. That is $70 just for the game. If you were to buy the Edition Pack, which gives you the Battle Pass and some of the DLC, you'd be looking at $99.99. And inside of that, they have COD Points, which you can purchase packages from $1.99 to $149.99. Now I'm not going to jump into the whole pricing of the COD points and then spending those COD points in the store that's in the game. What I'm going to do instead is just look at the DLC that's currently available on the Steam page. If you were to purchase every single DLC that's available on the Steam page, you'd be looking at $164.84. Add that to the battle pass and the game price if you didn't buy the $99.99 edition, you'd be looking at sinking $244.82 into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And you can't tell me that companies have to rely on the battle pass and the store and the DLCs to make it. If we look at the sales just from Modern Warfare 2, they sold in the first three days over 8 million copies. They're talking about bringing in over $1 billion just in the retail sales by itself, not in the battle pass, not in the store. They are bringing in enough just in sales to make that edition of the game profitable. And if we look at other games like God of War Ragnarok, which has no DLCs, it has no store, it has no additional monetization. You buy the game and you get the updates for that game and that's it. There's no way to purchase more unless you purchase a different edition edition, but even at that, you are getting tactile things like a hammer or some figurines, some different things like that. There is no DLC, there is no battle pass, there is no store for God of War Ragnarok, and they sold 5.1 million copies, and they're able to continue to produce good quality games without these other practices. Now, if you're not surprised already how much money you could be spending on games, don't worry, I've got more examples coming. Now, I wanna take a moment to let you know that I've started a second channel, and if you're enjoying this style of commentary, this is the style of commentary that I upload on the other channel on a regular basis. I've got a couple of videos over there already, and I'm gonna link one of them in the top right-hand corner of this video and in the description of this video, so you can go check those out. Additionally, I'd appreciate it if you whack the like button, and if you're not currently subscribed to this channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell so you get notified when I upload another video. So we've covered two different titles that are AAA titles, Modern Warfare 2 and God of War Ragnarok, both with very different monetization systems. Call of Duty has every monetization system that is known to date in video games, and God of War Ragnarok only has the single purchase monetization system. Both are very, very popular and very successful games. But what about other games? What about the ones that are kind of in the middle? So I took a look at Dying Light 2. So you could pick up Dying Light 2 for $59.99, you could pick up the Deluxe Edition for $79.99, and the Ultimate Edition for $99.99. Each one of those editions have a little bit different DLC added to them. Additionally, they have a few DLCs. They have Blood Ties, they have Nutcracker, and they have the Laugh Bundle. The total for all those DLCs is $15.97. So even if you bought the Ultimate Edition and all the DLCs, you'd be looking at $115.96. Now, that's definitely not on the high side of what you could spend on a game. It's not on the low side of what you could spend on a game either. It's probably right about middle of the road for what you could spend on a game like this with those DLCs. Now I want to look at games that are not AAA titles, and I'm going to start with Dead by Daylight. Now you can pick up Dead by Daylight for $19.99. It is a rather old game, so it makes sense that the price point is that low. 
However, just looking at the Steam page for the DLCs that they have for that game, you'd sink $265.67 into that game if you wanted every single DLC. And for those of you that have every single DLC, just imagine how much you've already spent on Dead by Daylight. Additionally, they have a battle pass that they do regularly, and that is $9.99. So if you've been partaking in those battle passes, you could just increase the amount of money you've spent on Dead by Daylight. Now, one of the interesting things about Dead by Daylight is they have an in-game currency that you can actually earn by playing the game, and you can use that currency to buy some of the items that are in their in-game store. Oh, did I mention an in-game store? So the DLC that you would buy on the Steam page is not the same items as what's in the store. What's in the store is mainly going to be different outfits and that's going to be an additional purchase on top of the DLC that you would buy in the Steam store. Most of those outfits when they first come out are $10 a piece. Now these do get discounted over time and some of the outfits you can actually earn during events, they just put them back in there for people that may have missed that event that really want that outfit. However, there is an absolute ton available for purchase in that in-game store, and if people are buying this on a regular basis, it's a very huge cash shop for Dead by Daylight. And probably one of the largest catalogs of items that I've seen in any game. Now let's take a look at Conan Exiles. Now many of you know I've been covering Conan Exiles for a long time. And the game right now is $39.99 on Steam. And if you want to buy all the DLC that's listed on Steam, you'll drop $116.89 across the 11 DLCs that are listed there. So the total to pick it up plus all the DLCs would be $156.88. However, Conan Exiles recently changed its monetization system from a standard DLC to having an in-game store and battle pass. So the battle pass will cost you $9.99 and those are supposed to come out every 90 days. On top of that, they have an in-game store where you use in-game currency that you purchase. This isn't currency that you can earn in the game, this is currency that you buy and then purchase things from their store. And their packs range from $9.99 to $59.99. Now it is hard to gauge how many items they actually have available for purchase in their store because their store rotates and revolves things in and out. However, I know over the last 180 days, I've spent over $100 on things from the Bazaar store and I haven't been able to buy every single thing that they've offered. And I think if anything, Conan Exiles gives us a good look at the clear direction that gaming companies are taking with their games. They've seen other games be successful with this kind of setup. They have an in-game store, they have a battle pass, they maybe have DLCs on the Steam page or somewhere else that you can buy, and all of these things are generating income. The only way that this is ever going to change is if that dries up and they no longer generate income. But that has some serious implications for us as gamers. For example, let's look at Conan Exiles. Conan Exiles is not a new game, it's been around for some time. But it is a live service game, which means that as long as they continue to turn a profit, they're going to continue to support this game. However, the key is that they continue to make a profit. When that money dries up, that game no longer continues to be a live service game. No company on the planet will continue to dump money into something to lose that money. They have to generate money. Now, the prices I feel like are very high for Funcom currently, and I do feel like they are losing sales because of that. And I come from a background where I feel like a velocity of items that are sold is better than having a lot of money from a single item sold. I'd rather sell a hundred of something at 99 cents than one of something at $100. And the reason being is because if I have a hundred transactions, that means I have a hundred customers. If I only have one transaction, I only have one customer. 
But that's just my personal opinion and I'm getting a little off topic here. Let's get back on topic. This is about your pocketbook and your money. You may not even know that you're spending this money. So a good practice for you would be to use a specific account to do all of your purchasing for games. Then you know you have to load that money into that account and you can go back and look at how much money you've spent over the week, over the month, over the year just on gaming. This is really going to put into perspective how much money you've been willing to put into games versus what you think you've been putting into games. Now, I'm monetized on YouTube, so I do make money from my videos. So games happen to be one of the things that are an expense towards my YouTube channel. Now, it's not my highest expense. My highest expense is definitely going to be equipment, but in second place, it's games. And I think if you look at how much you're spending, if you write that down or keep track of it, you'll be astonished at how much you're actually spending on games at the end of a year. Now, I'm not trying to browbeat you or tell you you're spending too much on games. Absolutely not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to put it into perspective as to if your money has to go somewhere else because of current affairs or current time times, the inflation that's going on, all of those things that happen in the real world, you're actually not going to have that money to spend. And these gaming companies are going to have issues as that money stops flowing in. Now, I want to know in the comment section below, did you have an aha moment in this video? And if you did, what point in this video did everything finally click? I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.